Purdue can beat you in so many ways with the way that they can uh, they can run their break, they can get offensive boards, they can uh, obviously score in the paint, they can score from three, and you just can't let them come down and and be comfortable and. And uh, I thought the fact that our guys really acted with their feet and hands. We had 57 deflections tonight, 33 at halftime. Troy had 13 at halftime alone. Ended up with 18 in the game. And that, that is a huge thing for us because of, because of the activity. You know, th it's a good passing team, good shooting team. They're very skilled, obviously. And you just can't let them get to their comfort level. And they did it a few times. They caught the ball deep in the post. And uh, that's a problem. But that, that's a problem for everybody trying to deal with them. But, but we wanted to put pressure on the ball. And when we did that, we did a good job. We created turnovers, which is, uh, which, is, which is rare to do against Purdue. And we took care of the ball, which is also rare to do against Purdue. And um, those were key, key, key uh, points in the game for us. So um, a lot of good basketball uh, from a lot of guys. And, and um, Yogi played a tremendous game. The only way Rob was coming out uh, and that second half was the way he came out, unfortunately. And um, so we'll deal with that. It's too early to tell, you know, what his status is right now. Uh, so he's continuing to re or, you know, be uh, evaluated in there and looked at. Troy played a phenomenal game. Troy's had, a, Troy's had an excellent week and very locked in and focused. And, and uh, Troy was incredibly committed uh, on the defensive end this week. And it's amazing what happens to your offense. We try to get these guys to understand all the time. When you focus on the defense and the rebounding and, and making simple plays with the ball, it's amazing how well you play. And that's exactly what he did. I thought um, all, all of our inside guys were up to the task. And it's no easy task to, to go to battle with, with, with the three centers that they have. But uh, they responded. And, and uh, they carried their own on the offensive end as well. So. Um, very proud of the way that they played. Our crowd was incredible. I didn't think it could be louder than it was for Iowa from start to finish, but it was. I mean, it was just um, it was tremendous. And we know we beat a really, really good team and um, that, that is going to play for a long, long time in the, um, you know, obviously it has the potential to play for a long time in the tournament. That was the number one key. We have to, I, I don't, I'd have to count this up to see what our guard rebounds were, but we just needed to be in the paint. I mean, you can't, it, it's a fight, right? We've got guys in there getting stitches, and I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a battle. And they're very good at it. They, they have great footwork in the post, and they get deep position, and, um, and they're quick, right? I mean, those, those guys are all quick. And, and um, so you've got to be down in there. And then you've got Edwards, who is just a machine on the glass. So it was, it was key. That was the number one key of the night was that, that, that we limited them as much as we could to one shot, you know, and if we got a turnover, so be it, and we ended up getting some, you know, that we turned into points, which was huge. But uh, that was the biggest key. And, and for us to carry that out um, is probably one of the main reasons that with the activity we had on defense for the, for the way that we won the game. Well, that's the key. You know, we we we're, we're not, um, we we just we had to stay true to to uh, the concept of what we wanted to get done with who we wanted to come off of, and there's a little bit of cat and mouse involved in that. You know, because you don't want to give up too many shots. You know, it's it's a risk with P.J. Thompson. He's a good shooter. He's shooting over forty percent, but but we we it's nobody has guys right now that can just guard those guys one on one. I haven't seen it. So you've got to do a great job. And it's not just the scoring in the post position, but they can shoot, you know, especially uh, A.J. Hammonds and Caleb Swanigan can shoot the ball. And they can pass, especially A.J. Hammonds, right? So to me, th th that was the key, that, that there was a lot of hands in there. There was a lot of hands, a lot of activity, um, you know, and, and that, the, that, the, that the, 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 the post defender didn't feel like he was in there by himself because they capitalized when he was in there by himself. And a couple of times... Uh, we gave too deep a position, and a couple of times, you know, we didn't put enough hand pressure on the ball. But that was absolutely key, that the guards were active, alert, aware, and able to recover. Tom, to be 12-3 and three right now in the Big Ten, looking at the big picture, what's pleased you the most about this team? Oh, I would say just the, 
the biggest thing is how they've stayed focused on each game. And I know that sounds cliche-ish, but it's absolutely true. I don't think we'd have this record without that. You know, going back to December, they have absolutely stayed centered on the day, you know, on the preparation that goes into it, on practicing really hard. And, and I think with that, that's, that's enabled us to, to practice less. We didn't even practice on Thursday. And, and there's a risk with that, right? Because Purdue's been sitting there since Tuesday night, I believe, and, and we didn't even go Thursday it, it, on the court at all because we hadn't been away from the court from a week from Monday, from the previous Monday. So when you have that and, and when they're in there watching film and when they're in there putting things together and they're communicating with the coaches, there's a complete, you know, they're, they're locked in. They're not just bought in, they're locked in. And I think that's, that's been the biggest thing to me has been that consistency of focus that they've carried. Oh, I think that's great leadership. I think that's I think that's really good. And and um, we've got to uh, we decided to go with Max because uh, we didn't want to start Thomas on Hammonds. And I'm glad I didn't do that. You know, Thomas only had one foul at half, I believe. So that was a, that was a good situation because I know, you know, Matt's going to see that matchup and and attack it even more so. You know, we've seen that in the past. And um, I think that's really key. Max has been excellent. Max has been a um, I hate to use the term big brother, but but we didn't need him, I've said this before, we didn't need him to come in here and be a babysitter. We needed him to come in here and show leadership, you know, with a bunch of young guys. And that's exactly what he's done. And, and those three young players respect him, like him, look up to him, because he has always um, been a part of it with them. And there's always a risk in that, right? You know, when you bring in somebody that age and somebody that's from a different program, and they're brand new guys, and that says a lot about Max, but it also says a lot about the young guys. And I think going back to Pat's question, that's why, that, that's, that's what's been impressive. I don't think you'd have the focus that this team would have if you didn't have a bunch of guys that really like each other and respect one another. Sorry, just to follow up, who picked up the stitches in that one? I didn't mention it. Oh, I thought you said somebody got stitches. No, they're getting stitches now. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Good. No turnovers in the first 17 minutes, only four for the game. What, what's changed with the team with, with well, they, just the night. They, they, it could, uh, you know, I, I, I can't answer that in a uh, proclamation because it could, it could, it could turn around for us, right? I mean, we want to play fast. We just don't want to play reckless. And I think they have a lot of respect for Purdue. They, they know how good that defense is, and and they put a lot of pressure on you. So to me, um, that's making the simple play. I mean, we had some, we had some open shots. In fact, at the end of the game. Those shots were open, and they were all good shots, but we probably needed to reverse it a little bit more. You know, and you don't want to put – you don't want to take the foot off the gas, but at the same time, when a team like that can score on the break, score off the boards, score in the post, and score from three, you don't want to give them that many opportunities. And uh, we probably needed to – I couldn't fault the, the openness of the shot, but we probably needed to reverse it a bit more. And I think they moved the ball. That, in answer to your question, they moved the ball all night long. At the end of the second – or first half, we took a couple shots that we needed to get it reversed, right, and and um, play through the paint a little bit better. We were 13 of 16 through the paint in the first half. We were 3 of 15 not through the paint in the first half. You know, that's the first thing that went on the on the um, on the grease board. You know, at halftime, and they understand that. I mean, they they they're not purposely trying to go through the paint. You know, because they're getting shots they think they can make and that they do make, but we need to go through the paint. Right, so I think when you do that, then it, it cuts down trying to make home run plays that aren't there. Yeah, drive. Yeah, we're looking for a clear out. Yeah, and um, really wanted to clear out, not the screen. We wanted to pull the. We wanted to pull um, 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 the, the man, and we had a, we had a different lineup on there. You know, that's a better play when you have more shooters on the court in that situation. But we wanted him to be able to get to the basket because with enough time, as you know, he's really, really good at driving underneath that, that backboard, right? We call it our ice, you know, and he's very, very good at that. So there's enough time uh, to make that play. But we wanted in his hands, and um, I thought it was the right call. Did you? Good. Yeah, I'm glad you agree. Good. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. 
Ken's my kind of um, another great mind. What do you see as a coach? He says he hasn't really changed anything, but have you seen him change anything as a coach in terms of speaking? No, he no. We the, the the worst thing could happen when somebody's struggling is you keep reminding them of it, right? And and there's enough talk on the outside of slump this and you know it's that's not what's relevant and and for us it's not about the percentages if we played other teams percentages we'd probably lose more games you got to play the players and you got to play the personnel play the the other teams it was the same thing with your own team and the last thing we want to do is dwell on what's not working we want to we want to make sure we're spending enough time on what is and and try to refine it so we, we, it was key that not only that we talk about being more aggressive, but that we actually put him in situations where he can be and in practice and, and hold him accountable a little bit more, which I do. And then, and then it just carries out into the game. So his focus is really, really strong. He, he is, um, I love him. I absolutely love him. And, and he's just getting better all the time. All right, thank you. Okay. Well, okay. Here's the here's the, you guys had four turnovers all game. Would you make Tom Crean run now? <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know. We've seen him run a few times. This doesn't look very pretty. <laughs> no, but I mean we did a great job, I think, sharing the ball. Um we didn't force anything, I feel like. <clears throat> we took the open shots, got it inside. You know, our big guys were phenomenal down there trying to work against those big guys, but Felt like we shared the ball, as, you know. Uh, we, when we got in the paint, we basically got whatever we wanted. Uh, I know they got the stats back there. I think in the first half, 13 for 15 in the paint, but uh, you know, three for 15, not going through the paint. So our biggest thing is always, you know, want to try and get in the heart of the defense and just kick it out and find whatever. Turnovers have been such a big issue for you guys. What what is the difference? Just being more careful with the ball, or just getting more experience, or what's changed? I think, yeah, experience playing in these tight games. And also not trying to make the home run pass. Um, like my man to my left right here, he had a phenomenal game. Um, you know, he kept his head up, you know, didn't force it when it wasn't there, went to the offensive glass. And, you know, he found shooters. And, you know, when he's doing that, playing at such a high level, we feed off that energy. Well, basically, you know, we know Thomas, Max, Juwan, OG, <clears throat> they're going to be fighting down there. So, you know, guys like me, Troy, Rob, Nick, you know, they got to, um, we got to go in and get the rebound, basically. And that gets our break started quicker. So we know that we were going to have to go in there and, you know, help our big guys out. You won't get him. <laughs> was doing a lot of talking from the bench to the other one. Just kind of how important, how crucial were you for each other just in terms of maybe being able to read the game and see what their bigs were doing and help, help kind of coach each other through the game tonight? Uh, it was real important, you know. Um, with me being out there, I needed the coaches, my teammates, even Max out there uh, talking to me, telling me what they're telling me what they're about the one from the scouting reports and all. And, uh, you know, we just did our best out there guarding the uh, – Guarding their big man, you know, uh, Hammonds and uh, Haas are two big guys, and they're, they're very talented down there in the low post. And we just, I just tried to do everything I could, and so did Max. Coach, you guys have been so good. Thomas, uh, going into the second half, you scored Indiana's first seven points in the second half. Was that a game plan? Was that something that you guys game plan going into the second half, or did the possessions just play out that way? Uh, the possession just played out that way, you know. Um, coach told me to look to be aggressive, you know. If I don't have it, kick it out. And fortunately, I had it, so I just took it. It just played out that way, you know. It was just my time. Coach, Troy, you've come back with two really strong games after Michigan State. Anything changed? Just focus or just? Uh, just staying on the attack mindset, really. Uh, reading what's there, not trying to force anything, let the game come to me. Yeah, I think so. And I think Max did an unbelievable job in the second half screening and popping, basically. 
I mean, they couldn't guard all of us at once, so they had to give something up. And I felt like Max did a great job, you know, getting his feet set, getting his hands set, and being ready to shoot and knocking down those open jumpers. But, you know, like I said, we just wanted to get into the paint and find open shooters. And that basically just kind of opened up the court for us. Yeah, well, um, you know, Coach Martin uh, did a great job talking to our big, showing them film of, you know, their tendencies and what they like to do. And I felt like, you know, Thomas, Juwan, and Max did a great job plan doing that game plan onto the court. And, you know, I could have seen all three of them fouling out. Surprised they didn't. <laughs> but, um, you know, they used up their fouls. I mean, that's fine. You know, you don't want them to get, like, get easy buckets. But, you know, they were fighting them down there. And, you know, I was proud of the way they fought them. Um, it's not really any concern level. You know, I think Rob's doing all right. Um, you know, it's just always just the next man stepping up. Um, yeah, I mean, I was just going to take whatever the defense gave me. And I felt like, you know, it was a, basically a one-on-one -on -one drive. I had someone in the corner I can't remember. But you know, I felt like the lane was wide open for the layup, and I ended up getting it. Oh, it helps a lot, you know, with me coming in, being a freshman, you know, not knowing the ways of the Big Ten so much and also playing in these big games. It helps from uh, learning from my teammates like Yogi and Troy and also Max, who's a big man, to help me, you know, down there in the post or tell me, like, what can happen or what might happen. You know, that, that makes a big help for me out there trying to defend and, uh, and offensively. Man, it's great. You know, I, I felt like, you know, we had a couple lulls, you know, a couple losses here and there. But I felt like we bounced back from those losses really well. And it's helped us win these games as of late for us. You know, we've stayed with it. You know, we've got a very communicative team, I feel like. You know, we're always talking. We're always talking to other teams' tendencies. And what these guys do, we, we listen to each other. And we just take it onto the court. And, you know, I just feel like that connectivity is there for, for us right now. Yeah, I mean, Troy playing like that, he's basically unstoppable. You know, what he does well, he gets lost in the game. And, you know, when I'm driving and I find him, I'm definitely going to hit him because he's going to be wide open. I know he can dunk it for us. You know, that's the greatest thing for him. You know, he's just doing a great job being patient, you know, trying to force it, uh, take what the defense is giving him. Um, you know, with his pull-ups, he's getting ready to shoot. been working on shooting. So I think it's just a big confidence factor, and he's had that the last two games.